Welcome to the Comics Experiment, the show right here, where I am joined by Andrew, Daniel, and my name is Benny. And we talk about things in the world of comics, movies, video games, TV shows, from philosophies to the world's worst food that they made. Next episode of the Comics Experiment, it's going to be while we're cooking, Green Arrow's chili. Anyway. <laughs> Can you just spin him? That's also Probably. a part of the show. Yeah, oh, God. Yeah, he's, he's too violent. I'm too violent. Anyway, I as I was saying, this show airs live every Thursday at twitch.tv slash comic story and on the Comic Story Podcast Network. Then it's uploaded to our YouTube channel where many of you are watching it. Also uploaded to all of your favorite podcast apps like Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes. Don't know any more off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> insert podcast platform here. Dan, insert my lips just moving to whatever you needed to say. <laughs> no, you don't even move them. Just go. <laughs> like your favorite podcast network. Like. <laughs> and then just do the over yeah, yeah. Like the overview. today's sponsor is G Fuel and if you're watching this live or on Saturday it's 30% off to celebrate some new tub sales they're having Ah, I got a text like an hour ago ah. convenient timing <laughs> nice convenient like G Fuel I one time filled my tub with G Fuel yeah it just seemed easier than making like pictures and stuff That's and then fair. you just walk over <laughs> yeah, yeah you just dip and then you also pour a little rum yeah well obviously <laughs> now it's a party bunch <laughs> So one time I filled it with Jello. Anyway, I don't want to go. Into so at this point, today's topic is going to be why has CW gone from good shows to bad shows? Using the latest couple of episodes of The Flash as an example, we'll also discuss why they can't even get the Powerpuff, sure, Powerpuff Girls show off the ground. Because he shouldn't. I mean, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, and we're also going to discuss why Legends of Tomorrow is the good idea and why HBO Max is apparently taking all the shows. I don't know. <laughs> Because they're they own them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, their parent company owns. Them. Yeah. So let's go ahead and kick off the discussion with putting this very straightforward. Dan and I review Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Superman, and Lois over on our other channel, Absolutely Marvel in DC, which is entirely focused on all of your favorite shows, from Loki to Mandalorian to the CW shows, and of course everything else involved in comic books and world stuff like that. It's Absolutely Marvel and DC. The link will be down below. So we're fully caught up on The Flash. So let me explain to you why this is a topic for the day. Because Andy, how much of Arrow and Flash have you actually watched and you meant to? <laughs> Make it sound like I drunkenly watched them. <laughs> like, what, what have I been watching six episodes of? The, the Flash. Flash! He wasn't well, even in okay. it. <laughs> uh, I watched, I believe, two seasons of The Flash. So the good ones. I want to say three or four seasons of Arrow. I think those were the good ones. So you're not like oblivious to the world no, of CW. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I watched two seasons of Legends of Tomorrow, one season of Supergirl. And I watched, was it the CBS one or the, the CW? CBS one. I didn't. I haven't watched any of the, C, uh, the CW version. CW made that show better? Fair enough. But now the first it's season worse wasn't again. great on... Well, I on always it. said the original, or original season when it was on CBS was just like... Allie McBeal with some Supergirl in it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it didn't help that they literally had Allie McBeal. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, I, I, didn't, I haven't watched any of Superman and Lois, although people tell me I should. Okay. It's actually pretty solid. So Flash is... Flash, and this is the issue I have, and I say this a lot in our other channel. If Flash, Arrow, all the shows... Well, Arrow's not even around anymore, Well, right? this is the issue it was yeah, having ended, towards the yeah. end, though. They keep introducing new characters... Over and over and over and over to the point where The Flash is an ensemble cast mm -hmm. and it's still called The Flash. The Flash wasn't even really in the last three episodes. Three episodes ago, Cisco left the show, so the episode is about Cisco leaving the show. Sure. Mm -hmm. Last week was about Cecile, which is Joe's girlfriend, who's a psychic DA. Don't worry, I, I just explained uh, her. <laughs> an empath. My bad. My bad. <laughs> There's a major difference. Giving her yeah. some backstory. And then the one that kind of incited this conversation was the one that aired on Tuesday. So this episode involved Barry and Iris deciding that they were going to go uh, have sex. Bang. They're banging. Yeah, they bang. They bang. <laughs> bang and trying to make some So they tweets. leave the show in the intro, leaving us with a sub-sub character as the primary plot person, mm -hmm. a replacement for Cisco that we don't know that much about yet. 
Okay. And a brand new returning character who did not have any character development prior. Because they developed the other character that was related to that character, but then he did stuff in real life that oh, got him removed yes. from the show. Uh, what's his Elongated name? The stretchy guy. Yeah, yeah, there Ralph you go. Digby. The so, stretchy guy. So this episode, so first off, Iris was nothing more than a supporting character for the first two to three seasons. And of course, yeah, pretty much. the fandom for Flash wanted her to be more. Sure. So the, the writers for Flash said, okay, we're going to give her some of her own arcs. We're going to make her her own person. And they eventually got Fine, to... Fine, we'll make her her own person. Oh, I mean, she was just the damsel in distress for the first couple of seasons. Well, to be fair, that's, that's what, what she, she was is. in the comics for the first couple of decades. So... <laughs> but, um... So, they turned her into an actual character who has her own job and purpose beyond I'm married to the Flash. Right. Because mm-hmm. uh, they tried that route for a little while. That was weird. We are Flash is the meme that went around forever. Yeah. She decided to make a big speech in the middle of, like, I think season four... Where this is when they were trying to give her purpose, and mm. her purpose was Barry couldn't speak for himself, so she would do all the motivational speeches for him. Oh. Which ended with the statement of "We are Flash." Sure. Which the internet had a great field day with. <laughs> right. Well, if As anything, the internet's known for it's letting <laughs> stuff go. Yeah. So and being reasonable. They decided reasonable, to do what yeah. I was suggesting since like season two, you know, because we do these shows, where we talk about the show right. off and on. I was like, she just needs to be a reporter. That's her job. Or That's give her what powers. Her, she or give, does in the comics. Yeah, give yeah, her something. Yeah. So around season five, they gave her her own reporting company, and they hired people for her. So she became a main character, like finally where she should be, and she got her own supporting cast. One of those supporting cast is Allegra, a girl who has the power of heart. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that character from she's she's from like Captain Planet. Planet. Yeah. she's like a light based where she can like use ultraviolet rays and stuff. Okay. She's like a solar. But her generator. cousin uses hate, and she now uses love. Sure, <laughs> that that was basically it. Was a classic. Where does your power come from? How right. do you channel it? With love. With well, love like I've always said, if you kill your enemies with kindness, it takes a little longer. But... It was like it was like a like a red lantern versus a pink lantern. Kind sure, of sure. Okay. So that she was the primary character of, of Tuesday's episode. <clears throat> the secondary character we were going over is a character named Chester, who I've only learned his name as of last week's episode. Because okay. I couldn't remember what his name was because he was that inconsequential to the overall plot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he's a guy who had powers. They stripped him of his powers, and then he's teamed up with Cisco ever since. Hold on, I want I want to explain that bit a little more because I find it hilarious. He accidentally got powers because of something the Flash team did. They had to take him in and basically enclose him in this giant orb for six months, and he just chilled in this orb <laughs> for six months, and then came out and was like, "I want to be a part of this team." <laughs> That's exactly what he did. Okay. <laughs> I've... So he hasn't had very much character. We had one episode where him and Cisco met his dad in the past, mm-hmm. and we had like another episode where he was he, he, where he talked about how his feelings of Cisco leaving. He's been on the show for two years now, and he is finally Has getting it been to- two years. Yes, <laughs> he didn't join this season. No, he just oh. finally got uh, upgraded to he's a regular. He I got upgraded to people know his name. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, all right then. I, I apparently I learned something about the show I've been watching <laughs> weekly for the past. This just adds years. to my point. You yeah. don't even know anything about Chester. The show, as our chat says, was calling him Chuck. I thought his name was Echo because he's the super intelligent guy. <laughs> None of those are accurate. Apparently, I thought his name was John. <laughs> the guy who played Mr. Terrific on Arrow, a show I don't watch. His real name is Echo, and Chester was kind of filling that Mr. Terrific style role where he just shows oh, up okay. with. Guys, I have an answer. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was just waiting for him to be like, it's the Chuck balls. Let's send them out. <laughs> and my, my C balls. <laughs> so he hasn't, my point is, he, he, him and his C balls haven't gotten very much development at this point. Right, right. His C balls haven't developed. So instead of, an, nope. so we have an episode that is primarily focused on Allegra, a sub character to a character who only recently really got hammered in as having her own purpose outside of being Flash's wife. Which, for the record, I also always forget her name as well. I if only, you didn't name her, I wouldn't The only know reason the I know her name is Allegra is not even from the episode. I was reading the Reddit afterwards to see if, like, we're crazy <laughs> for not liking this episode. Okay. Whenever Dan and I are I was just cramping on an episode of Flash, I go to the Reddit to see if, like, 
it's just a Dan and me thing. Right, right. Or does the community as a whole agree this is a terrible episode? Okay. It was as a whole. And the <laughs> overall meme was, uh, this week's an Allegra episode, you can skip. <laughs> he, he sent me the best meme. It's that the one from Family Guy where he goes, that's right, folks. This is a Meg episode. <laughs> Here's the remote. And no one will judge you. <laughs> <laughs> so the episode was, so I'm like, okay, cool. At least we're going to get Allegra a character that I don't think anyone cares about. And Chester, we're getting more development on these sub characters. Bear in mind, we haven't had Flash in an episode in three episodes. Well, besides or Iris, them, we haven't even gotten Iris in an episode. Of three excluding episodes. them getting walked in on banging in the basement. I mean, besides that, that's their only it happens to the best of yeah. the moment. So instead of just giving us an episode about these two, because last week they gave us an episode about Cecile. Which was cool to finally develop her character because she's been nothing but Joe's girlfriend and the only psychic whenever they need to just expedite anything in the plot. Sure. Easiest yeah. way to expedite plot points. How do we figure this out? Hold on, Cecile. What have you figured out? Well, by reading their minds. Yeah. <laughs> mm. She feels as though she knows that this person did it over here at this time on this day. Is that helpful? Yeah. That's literally what she okay, does. I'll see you next so episode. So until last week, that was like her entire character arc. She shows up as the ultra MacGuffin, the ultimate, I will fix every problem and answer all your questions. Sure. Villain is over here. <laughs> and then much. Joe would normally walk in and go, that's great, sweetie. Mwah. And then they'd leave. <laughs> right now the big boys are talking. <laughs> Joe. Show got super yeah, sexist Joe were, all of a sudden. Joe, we're going to just completely not even talk about either because that's. He quit his job. And He's not a police captain thing anymore. In, in, in but he itself. keeps going to the police station. It's like the standard, like, I want to retire, but I'm sucked back in. Yeah. They keep, he's just Danny Glover. <laughs> Too old for this shit. <laughs> so anyway, I'm like, okay, this is going to be a terrible episode developing characters that are not the Flash on the Flash again. Sure. But instead of developing those two, Chester got bumped to beat the C tier again mm -hmm. so we can develop Allegra's relationship with her cousin and Sue Digby, who has returned, and I didn't think about Dibney. this. Digby, whatever. Dibney. In the comics, she's the equivalent of one of those woman in the refrigerator characters. So yes. giving her any development is good. But why does she even exist in the show? Ralph and her left when the whole thing came out. They were gone. Yeah. For like two or three episodes now, she's popped up as, and I saw this on the Reddit, as basically Catwoman. She's a burglar who knows martial arts. She got into a fight with seven guys this episode and beat them all with an electric whip. Yep. <laughs> she also argues with Team Flash, doesn't work with them, and just shows up to literally beat the enemies and then leave and be like, wow, you guys really had this one figured out. You didn't need me. And I'm just sitting there going, no one needs you. You're a cat burglar. We have a guy with super speed, the Frost Queen. Yeah, but he's banging. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> he said bang, 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 bang. And speed. then you just gave powers what? at super speed. And then they just gave powers to Allegra, so now she can do things. Well, she had power because she started off as a villain in the show. Like she was one of those ones where she was villainous, and they're like, "No, you don't have to be villainous." And she's like, "Can I work on your newspapers?" <laughs> yeah, that, wrong. that was her introduction. Cool. You're now a newspaper person that doesn't use her powers ever. So what we've gotten to is them. a point where the Flash show doesn't even feature the Flash. Doesn't even feature the important secondary characters. Like, why isn't Caitlin and Killer Frost primary in this episode? Why isn't Iris? Well, I mean, Iris is busy with Flash, but you could have easily yeah, removed yeah, Grant yeah, Gustin yeah. with other things. Yeah. <laughs> why isn't Iris around? Why are characters that are not the Flash not getting divided? Why does this, and this is the issue I think that we've run into with CW. Other than everything getting super melodramatic, uh, the cast, they have gotten so big. And for whatever the reason, the writer's room can't just say, hey, Allegra, you're a sub-character to a sub-character. We don't need an episode yeah. about you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, why do we need an episode about the C-tier plot characters? Uh, because... Uh, Barry and I are Mr. Bang and we gotta talk about something this week. <laughs> and Cisco's gone. And Cisco's gone. Which still they get rid of like the best characters. Cisco was great. I'm just saying. Well, I think the actor was done. I don't think it was like No, I know. I wonder yeah, why. I, I, <laughs> I don't feel like they were like, Yeah, we're gonna get rid of him. But it got me and Andy talking about it this morning because I was like, the issue that these that this is presenting 
is that everyone and their brother wants to have these big sprawling casts. They want to have 20 different people and whatever. Mm. And some of the best shows, the best seasons that have been revered were like Mandalorian season one. One guy and a puppet. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me Grogu wasn't real? <laughs> no, Andy, I'm sorry. My bad. One guy and a baby Yoda. <laughs> Thank you. Loki has been really good because it's been Loki, Owen Wilson, and female Loki. Sylvie, my bad. <laughs> Sylvie. Who I still don't think is female Loki. I still think it's the Enchantress. I think, oh, well, it's I in, think she it, even says I use enchantments. That was like yeah, the they most said it like a, several uh, times. Uh, I, my, my theory is they're just taking female Loki and making it enchantment. Well, and that's well, what I'm saying. Just just yeah, yeah, yeah. We have instead a, of just having female Loki. We, we won't go into Loki on, the, on yeah, this yeah, yeah. episode. But though, what I'm saying worry. is those seasons yes. are great. Like yes. even a Falcon and Winter Soldier was about Falcon, Winter Soldier, random girl who had powers. And Zemo. And Zemo. <laughs> Probably one of the best characters and, on that show. And US agent for a little bit. John oh, yeah. Walker was there. Yeah, he was he there. Was. And, then, and then he shows up all like, and I'm still sort of a good guy. <laughs> And I consider myself not half bad. <laughs> but he, the, he gets the not as, what is it? The Zuko award. Not as bad of a guy as he could have been award. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But what I was thinking is, why are those, I mean, budget aside, actors aside, Tom Hiddleston can carry Loki. It oh, could, yeah. It could just be Tom Hiddleston arguing with a variant Loki that is literally a pile of poop, and I'd probably watch it and be like, man, he's amazing. <laughs> What a great actor. It's like, <laughs> such range. <laughs> Look at him arguing with that poop. <laughs> Look at him be that poop. <laughs> but it also got me thinking about the best, what we we as the fan base of the CW shows consider the best seasons of those shows. Era one and two. Mm. He's vigilante. Mm -hmm. Right. Then he fights Deathstroke. Right. Those were great. And then Deathstroke murders everyone. <laughs> and but then the, he fights Deathstroke again. <laughs> but the cast wasn't huge. It right, was very yeah. tight knit. Flash yeah. started with Flash, Wells, Cisco, and Caitlin. Right. And Iris was there when she needed to be saved. Iris and Joe, sure. but they were like side characters. Yeah, yeah they, they were, didn't yeah, they didn't yeah. have any real focused plot. They yeah, were just yeah. you know, Joe was the old wise guy to give Barry advice and Iris was his sister slash soon yeah. to be wife. I, yeah. Iris was the no, very inappropriate <laughs> relationship. <laughs> Those that's are the best the, that's ones. That's the real reason they didn't touch too much on it, is they didn't want people going, wait a second. They're brother and sister. But now they already did that. But now it's super big on Pornhub. So it's cool. <laughs> you know the best part about the fandom you know. when it comes to the brother sister thing? If you bring it up to any of the hardcore fans who like love every single episode, we don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Why does everyone bring that up? And, and I just kind of. Well, it's sort of like the kiss from Luke and Leia in the yeah. first two movies. We don't, talk about, we don't that. talk about it. All right. I just love the Flash and Iris one though because everyone's like, we don't we don't bring that up. Why do you keep bringing that up? Uh, for four seasons, it was because it's awkward. That's <laughs> why. But like one of my one of those shows that I ranted or raved about last time we were reviewing shows before we made absolutely the Marvel in DC mm -hmm. Black Lightning, season one is about Black Lightning. Do you know why I stopped watching season two? Because they went Black Lightning's family. He's like, I'm getting too old for this shit. And everyone so else, my daughters have super. Yeah, so everyone else had powers, and I'm like, no, I wanted to watch Black Lightning. Mm -hmm. Like that was what I wanted to watch. Not, I don't even know the names of his daughter's superhero personas. Uh, uh, one's Black lightning. Thunderbolt. I think one's just lightning, and the other one's heat lightning. <laughs> You're just making that one up now. I, say I think lightning. Thunderbolt is one of them, actually. Though <laughs> I don't know, it's a thing. But it, it know, just it reminded me, like, so what do you guys think? Because I've been talking now for a good chunk of this. We've got about oh, 19 about minutes. Yeah, about, yeah. But you guys have chimed in <laughs> a little bit here and there. Sure, I've tried to chirp. What do you think has killed CW? Because in my opinion, what has killed CW is they've one tried to make a new show every year. And they try to make them as big as cast as possible because, like, Batwoman started with, like, seven people on the cast. Didn't watch it, don't you? <clears throat> so I feel like, actually, you bringing up Batwoman's a great example was Flash and Arrow started off fantastic because they were just that. Flash, Arrow. Yeah. They started off, they were the main characters. You knew what you were getting yourself into. Then as the seasons progressed, they realized... There's only so much you can do with the same characters without going into full just villain of the week, which honestly, I might have preferred, but that's a different story. Um, and they eventually got into, okay, well, we need to develop these side characters that are interesting. And they we did get good characters like Vibe and mm. Killer Frost. I enjoyed those characters. I thought they did great. I like one or two extras. Exactly. Yeah. Like you, you get the one and two and you go, cool. 
This is gonna work. It gives us some range. We can mix things up a little bit, but we have our core. Then they started going, okay, well, we've we've re pretty much, uh, that was a hell of a neck crack. Yeah, right. you okay, go uh, live? <laughs> um, <laughs> My spine. <laughs> they, they reached a point where they basically drained those dry and then started losing actors who were like, I'm done. Like I I, yeah, I had yeah, fun. Isn't that why I Wally my left? Role. The actor who played Wally West, he left because he wasn't getting enough like show like show screen time. time yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, something along. And he was those really lines. good in that role. It was pretty good, yeah. Um, except when he became like a Buddhist monk, that thing threw me off. But that's a different thing Life uh, in is itself. Speed. But oh, I think that was his slogan. That was really. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> yeah, percent um, made that up on the spot. I thought. But so Damn it. <laughs> I have a feeling that because those went in that pattern. Batwoman was like, okay, we know we're going to get to that point. We are aware that we will lose what we can do with just this, and we will have to have the big uh, ensemble. And I feel like they were like, okay, let's just start with the big ensemble. Screw it. We'll jump ahead. Exactly. We'll skip a few pages. Because yeah. Legends of Tomorrow, you also brought that up, first season, not great. Every season after that, fantastic. I love that show now. Um First season was too serious. After that, that's when, the only yeah, I was gonna say when I, they the, when they really embraced the craziness. Exactly, yeah, but the better. other the time thing travelers. don't make sense. Yeah, yeah. The other thing that makes Legends cast work and have the multiple big characters work is because of the fact that they acknowledge that it is not focused on one character. They acknowledge that this is a full team thing. It started as a team thing. They all have their different motives and reasons they're here and character development, but we were aware from the get-go it is a group of main characters, not Sarah Lance and the Legends of Tomorrow. Which is kind of what it became, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of what it became, but they still kept it good enough that you understood why they would go into the different characters, whereas... Flash going into Allegra just, it felt forced. It yeah. felt like they went, crap, we signed her contract saying she needs to get at least one Allegra-focused episode. <laughs> uh, well, Flash and Iris are banging. Let's let's have her meet her cousin again. And I think for the record, it, become it was Spectre. so out of left field, they redid her origin story in it. She explained it all again. Mm -hmm. Basically because they're like, no one's going to know who I am. <laughs> Hey yeah. guys, remember when I told you about this? I'm telling you again. But yeah, that's 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 basically why I think that they have gone terrible is because they started with structure and then they started just bending at so many different edges of going, well, this person's going, well, that person's kind of cool. The audience liked that one. Let's keep them around. Let's make her a focus. Well, the Reddit's flaming this. Let's turn this around. And then they just expanded too much and it just became a convoluted mess. Right. And they just need to go back to Flash. Send Flash to the future just, and have Flash figure out how to get back without a cosmic treadmill. I don't freaking know. But put Flash on his own again, doing Flash things. Not I mean, Flash banging. Best. Not Flash family. Not Force Quest where you somehow think you've got kids. A Flash story. We have not had a Flash story. In well, I, 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 said, I think it said four seasons ago. Flash would yeah. fix itself if it just... Flash and Harrison Wells, you know, Tom Cavett on Grant Gustin, mm -hmm. got lost in the Speed it. Force, <laughs> and the story was them in the Speed Force. There you go. Cool. And the Speed <laughs> Force, not his mother being the Speed Force, yeah, then sucks. pretending he's she's his daughter somehow. But the big sister. Dan, the Dan's kids. got a few hang ups on the I've last noticed. <laughs> he's getting <laughs> angry. For the last couple of episodes. They were not um, good. I want to ask Andy's opinion of comparing this to Mandalorian and Loki, but I got one last thing to say about the current direction CW is going. I think Superman and Lois shows that they've at least finally started to acknowledge mm -hmm. the problem. Either that or WB came in and said, whoa, 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 whoa. Who's Allegra and why are we giving her an episode? Because yeah. <laughs> uh, Superman and Lois is basically focused on Superman, Lois, their two kids, and Lex. Everyone else is additional people to the show. Alternate well, reality. Morgan Edge. Alternate reality, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. No, but, Captain no, but, Lex. 
But even all even all those people, they don't have any centric episodes. There's not we're not right. we're not following Lana. Yeah, but to, uh, it is Lana, to, right? The one yes. that okay. to be fair though, they're only what eight episodes in. Give it time. <laughs> like we don't have uh, we don't have an episode. Eleven. Lana's helping Sorry. Lois out. We don't have a whole episode where Lana's like, all right, Lois, I got it. And then we follow Lana as she goes to see her sickly brother, and then she goes to see her the oh. er, the community area that she's helping out with, and then she walks over is to the she, mission. She and, for a second, I was like, you haven't gotten to that episode yet, have you? Uh, is there one where? <laughs> There's one where it's, oh, it's it is kind of focused on her, but it they do it in the proper way where it's focused on her and the overall plot. I started eight it's this not, morning. Yeah, is she it's a not a uh, is she a mermaid in the comics. At one point, Lana Lang was a mermaid. What no, that? but she becomes Superman's mother. Well, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but like the Superman does it well because when they go into the side stories focused on those characters, it's a plot. It it relates to the overall plot. It's not just a, by the way, Lana's cousin is in town. Let's see what she does and how yeah. her daughter reacts. No, it's her I going, think, think that's the worst. oh, this is me working with what Lois had told me and going uh, with the Morgan Edge stuff. And it made sense. The plot was still there. I think that's the thing is the I was, plot is still there. I, was saying, I think that's like the, the Cisco one, at least the plot was there and Barry was running around like, hey guys, I'm still here. The Cecile episode was not very centric at all, but at least it, because I even said it when that episode aired, like, oh, we've never had anything with Cecile, and it was kind of cool to see her use her powers yeah. beyond showing up and being like, I read the villain's mind. <laughs> hey, everybody. But this particular episode was a plot that had nothing to do with the Flash, nothing to mm -hmm. do with the overall seasonal plot, nothing. Well, that could also run into the main issue that all of these normal shows run into, which is they have to fill 22 episodes. Yeah. And the actual main plot, if you broke it down, is like an hour and a half. <laughs> Oh, and that's yeah, why so Mandalorian. You just need to fill in a bunch of episodes. This was the yeah. annual episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I feel like that's I mean, a that, great that's way of in normal TV. It, that's kind of how it all runs into. So, I mean, well, then using that as your pivot, Loki and Mandalorian, how they're focused episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? What, I, What's your pivot? Was Andy, what was my pivot? I don't understand. <laughs> well, how you feel that those are handling it in a better situation? If it's normal situation. TV. Oh, you know, even using that basis, it depends like, like oh, opinion of this thing I randomly said. Uh, we could even use the Netflix shows as an example because most of those were great in seven episodes, and, and then, then they us. stretched it to twelve or thirteen. <laughs> yeah, I think the main issue is is that it's the runtime they run into, which is like, well, we have to fill a season of 22, 24 episodes. Even really good shows like Supernatural ran into that, where like you have seven or eight episodes in a row, which is like, I mean, they're not even really talking about the overall season plot; they're just. But it was going still to Sam and Dean. Bobby and going, yeah, well, you know what I'm saying? But they still have those filler episodes. Right. With Supernatural, it was just still Sam and Dean going to kill a monster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, they so we were okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> Even the episodes where they focused on like Bobby and stuff. Sam and Dean were there. Sam and Dean would like call in, but, hey, Bobby, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the best one ever was when they focused on the car. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> they still had Sam and Dean running around. I it. mean, if you, look at episode, <laughs> if you look at shows like uh mando or or loki or falcon winter soldier or wandavision because they have such a small episode count yeah your writers your directors your everybody they can just focus on the core plot i mean mando basically season one and two was just mando trying to figure out what the hell to do with baby yoda or grogu if you want to go with his actual the name. puppet the puppet <laughs> he was a real thing to me. Just <laughs> as real as Yoda was when I was a kid. I liked him eating the eggs, though. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Adorable. God. He almost killed off that entire species. <laughs> I like how no one ever really commented on that. Oh, no. the internet commented like I was like, going to say, there was a oh, yes. baby Yoda. They, they tried, if there was a brief moment where they were like, baby Yoda's evil. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Because the whole a, episode goes it by. It was a big thing. I was waiting for there to be a moment where someone's like, by the way, he ate half the baby. Nobody in the show said anything because I don't think anyone was paying attention. And if, if those creatures were anything like real frogs, like they had tons of babies. Uh, but yeah, the internet freaked out. Anyway, uh, you know, that show, even in the second season, which was much bigger in scope, it was still Mando and Grogu. And individual episodes, they would meet like Bo-Katan or Boba Fett or, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the show is still focused on them. And I think the CW, I fell off long ago. So I don't even know who half the people you, you guys are talking about are. Don't worry. Most of the fan base doesn't either. Uh, <laughs> Not me. But I feel yeah. like a lot of the times, yeah, they do have these giant ensemble casts and they have to stretch out for 22, 24 episodes. So they have to fill in these episodes. Uh, my main issue with the CW shows was always the melodrama thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, now, comic books have melodrama, don't get me wrong, 
but it became not shows about superheroes with some melodrama. It became shows about melodrama with a little bit of superheroes in them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when I fell off. I, I could care less about people's personal drama. I don't care about your guys' personal drama. So you're saying the ensemble <laughs> cast would have been fine if it, did, if it wasn't just drama filled every single episode? Possibly. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Like I said, because I don't really, I don't watch them anymore. Right. So, and I, I, I mean, it's well, been you're a primary years example since why, I watched them. So, yeah. and that's why I wanted to bring this topic up because you're like Dan and I are sticking it out. You're the guy that left yeah, after yeah. the good. Oh seasons. yeah, I just, I just, I move on to other TV. So yeah, yeah. There's so much stuff out there to watch. I'm not going to watch stuff that I'm not really into. We are in a day and age, the golden age of television. I was going to say, there's a lot of stuff to watch right now. So. I mean, I'm still it's trying to get much. through Castlevania, which I still can't believe. Oh, I need to watch two. that. Oh, they're starting a new one, by the way. Yeah, I've read it. With Richter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's pretty sweet. I'm like trying to get through that. And I'm like, ah, oh, I got to catch up with Superman and Lois. But none of them have a whip. Castlevania episodes are only like 20 minutes long. Yeah, but I'm catching whole seasons of it. I mean, I'm <laughs> yeah, but they're not that. They're like 10 episodes that's per gonna... season. <laughs> Man, I gotta watch a full season that takes me like the length of a movie. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell, man? <clears throat> no, but yeah, there's just so much to watch. I yeah, I don't get behind the melodrama thing, which is why I fell the CW shows. I have enough yeah. drama in my own life. I don't need to watch other people's. I don't even yeah. have that much drama in my own life, and that's the way I prefer it. So I'm not watching <laughs> other people's. It's fair. Yeah. And he's like, I don't like the Dan again today. I, don't Ugh, deal with that. I mean, God. I am drama. so much melodrama. Hopefully, this is a side episode where we can focus on Winry. <laughs> that would be an amazing episode. I'm just gonna say, Dan the TV show. Here's the Winry episode. <laughs> the Winry episode. And just, just every now and then, I'm walking follow. in the background, yeah, yeah, but it's just my legs. <laughs> it'll be the scr- like the Scrubs when they do the from their perspective yeah. episodes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the pizza dog yeah. episode. Perfect. So, so you think it's more that they've just amped up the melodrama? They're trying to focus in on that. That's like, the reason I don't watch them 21 anymore. Seventeen to twenty-one-year-old demographic. Well, that's the reason I don't watch them anymore. But based off of what you've told me, it does sound like there's way too. I mean, even towards the end of when I was watching Arrow, he had it was it was Oliver, Felicity, uh, Diggle, and then it had like Ragman and it, like all those. And it was like he was like putting together a whole team. Mad Dog, I think it was one yeah, of them. Yeah, Mad Dog. And <laughs> then like, Mad Dog. And then like the Speedy or the Red Arrow that betrayed. The, it was like this. It's like. And he I had, don't, don't forget, there was there was the Birds of Prey, his daughter and her team in the future. Well, I don't know about that one because I, I was off after that point. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's. It's like I I just want to show about Green Arrow. Yeah, <laughs> I just or I show and, if you, like, and if you've run out of ideas, end it on season four, and focus and then on making focus on the team thing. Yeah, and just have Oliver Oliver show up every now and then and go. You guys probably shouldn't do that. This is how I do the salmon ladder. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, have you seen my boxing glove arrow? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Do uh, something like that. I'm so disappointed yeah. he never used that as far as I, I know. don't know why they would not because that it would have been awesome. would have been perfect. But yeah, that's so that's they. I mean, they always have way too many characters on their show. Well, I think that's the biggest issue, though. Yeah, because you could have a nice tight knit six to ten episode show about just the Flash doing things, but they have to stretch it out. Right, they're trying to fill so much time with so many characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just got introduced. He, he, you know, his favorite, the Force Quest, Mm -hmm. like six new characters, Mm -hmm. and they were around for like four episodes, and they all got backstory and everything. Yeah, and then they were just thrown away. They were like, now they're in a house. Like don't know real, where. Like the real world? We kind don't of, know. Yeah. It's kind of like in the Speed Force, it's but like not really. It's like the real Speed Force. What happens when speedsters stop being polite <laughs> and start getting real? So now, I should pitch a show to see that. Powerpuff like Girls it. has already been... Oh. They're reshooting the pilot. That was a pivot like you yeah. would <laughs> Powerpuff Girls is reshooting the pilot because yeah, it be, did so poorly. Because How would I was gonna you say do Powerpuff Girls? I, I saw like some of the dialogue people were talking about from the pilot and they were like, yeah, this is not good. I didn't see any of it. Yeah. It was like, I forget the exact words, but it was basically like, they were just basically talking about like their sex lives. And like one of them was calling the other a slut or something like that. And they were just, I guess it shockingly didn't go well. So they were trying to make sex in the city, but with power. It sounded like it based off of the little part I actually read. And they were just, are they supposed to be in high school? I don't. They're supposed to be super powered teen or kids that were created from test tubes. I don't know. Sugar spice and everything. I don't know nice. why they're making. <laughs> and then a Chemical live, X. I don't know why they're making a live action Powerpuff Girls. I don't At think no they point, know why. Did they're I watch making... the Powerpuff Girls, which I did enjoy when I yeah, was, you know, good. when I was like a teenager yeah. and was on TV, and at, at no point did I go, God, I wish this was in real life. 
You know what I'm waiting for? Fantasy. The follow-up to the Powerpuff Girls, the live-action Scooby-Doo weekly drama. I would watch that. I, uh, if they did it like <laughs> Riverdale or Supernatural. <laughs> oh, if they did it like Supernatural. Every week oh, just the Mystery oh, Machine That actually up. sounds that not bad. Awesome. Why doesn't that exist, but we just have Sex like, in the City Powerpuff Girls? I actually want the gritty... <laughs> supernatural version of of Scooby Doo. They ditch the mystery machine early on to get an Apollo. The mis- no, no, no. The mystery machine, machine yeah. has machine guns. <laughs> Wow, you, Fred's, went, you went Mad Max with it. Yeah. Fred's like constantly like tinkering with it. No, like if you push this button, a steak pops it's out. Like, <laughs> and you could stab the vampire with so, it. So wait, wait, what, if it, what if it was Scooby that. Apocalypse, the show? Now, see, I, I would w- watch that, I, actually. I, I would watch series. it, but I would prefer like a supernatural version. Well, yeah, I fair. mean, they just do it in that way, though. They just do the concept of Scooby Apocalypse so the monsters are real. Right. But we do it with Supernatural right, and right. Mr. Okay. Machine. I would, I would, yeah, I would, I would watch, watch that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Way more than a Powerpuff Girls remake, which... In live action. I, How are you yeah. going to do Mojo Jojo? That, exactly. Yeah. He's going to be like Gorilla Grodd on Flash. <laughs> which wasn't good. Which wasn't good. And when they bring him back, it's still not good. Yeah, I know. And the worst ever is when they had King Shark versus Gorilla Grodd. It was just two CG monsters fighting. Well, Big CGI fight that. coming up. Yeah, well, and yeah. it's like, it, it could be cool like a Kaiju fight, but you don't have the budget. So no, right, yeah. <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So, all right. I think he had a good point, though, that I, I do want to just kind of put at the end all of. points are good. The superhero shows, when they moved from being a superhero show to a CW show, yeah. that's when they started getting bad. It's funny because they call it a CW show, but it, people who don't know, CW started as UPN. No. Like a CW show was a black family comedy. They had a whole block. Remember that? Well, yeah, that was UPN, but they also had WB, WB Kids. And that was technically all on the same channel. I just remember watching UPN, and it was like it was like Moesha and yeah. oh, that's a good show. Smart Guy, also a good show. Yeah, and the Harvey. Is that sister, Harvey guy. sister on so there too? He, he was doing that was a good show. Family Feud for a while there. Steve Harvey? Yeah, Steve Harvey show. You wanted to say Harvey Dent, didn't you? No, I, I was Harvey watch that. something. A Dent family drama. <laughs> All right, can you answer or do I kill you? <laughs> Sorry. On the upside, it makes things. But I'm saying, and, and the Wayne's super. Brothers, the Wayne's Brothers show was on there yeah, too. Yeah. And they had they had Martin. their own like they had their own like TGIF Friday, which I used to watch. And then they went. Well, that was when we were little little. Yeah, kids, yeah, but then it, it, it was turned like it. Family Matters, Step by Step. <laughs> but it went from it? like Perfect UPN, Strangers. It went from UPN just being like black family comedies to Arrow. <laughs> like, well, what? CW has been the CW and Vampire for a, Diaries. I was gonna say CW has been a while uh, around for a while. They had Vampire Diaries. Mm-hmm. I think wasn't Gossip Girl technically on CW? They've been yeah, doing like the drama right. thing. Gilmore Girls, Liars. Too, wasn't it? Gilmore Girls. I'm gonna say they've been doing the drama thing for a while. Talk about a pivoting network. Because now that I think about it, they're like, all at one point they were also entirely sci-fi. Remember when Voyager was on there? They're like, oh, we're man. the sci-fi channel. I used to, yeah, I used to stay up late and watch Voyager. <laughs> yeah, I used to like Voyager. Man, that poor network. It's like they finally figured it out with CW, and they're just losing it piece by piece, year by year. Uh, but I think that's what ruined them, is when they went from being superhero-focused to... Melodrama focused. Melodrama. Yeah. All right. It's not even drama. It's melodrama. Yeah. I think the worst... And, and this is the worst part about the drama. They take actors that are obviously in their upper, like, low, younger 30s, like Cisco, mm-hmm. and they, they continually make them act like they're 17 to 21. Like Which, the, it's, the episode where Cisco was leaving the show, yeah, he was in tears because he officially decided he was going to leave, and nobody threw him a growing away party. And while you could, I wa- do that all you, the time. You could warrant, like, okay, he was upset it's by like it I was blah, going blah, blah, home, blah. and no one made a but party. He, but like, there was literally a scene where he's in a room with the lights off, looking at a picture, and he's like, "The good old days," and I was just like. The dude's supposed to be like 30 yeah, but, something now. Yeah, but have you met a lot of people that are out there these days? That's a <laughs> lot of people. That would sit yeah. in the dark in yeah, a room yeah, with yeah, a picture. Yeah. You know, I was just doing it last night. Yeah, yeah, so Dan's right. like, back when it was just me and Benny. <laughs> then Andy showed up. There's another picture of me, which is the cross now. <laughs> it's actually cut out. Yeah, yeah. Cut you out of the middle. <laughs> You're like the super villain of the show. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I they throw had, a they dart really your face is on the dark. <laughs> it was like board. when they had the, the Nora, their actual daughter, come back in time, and the, the woman yeah. that was playing her had to be like in her late 20s, early 30s. And then, you know, Grant Gustin and I and, the, and Candace Patton, they're also in their late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all around, like, Mom, Dad, oh, you're keeping me inside and grounding me. And it's like, 
Guys, this is awkward. Yeah, guys. This, is, this is yeah. This is almost as awkward as Barry and it's Iris almost as awkward together. <laughs> it's almost as awkward when you're watching your favorite sitcom and they decide to do the flashback episode, but the same actors play the younger actors. <laughs> oh, I always love that because it doesn't work. <laughs> exactly, but it's hilarious. <laughs> But imagine that being taken seriously right, right, in the right. concurrent I like block. it on Scrubs because they always gave JD a mullet. Yes. For when he was, that was in I love when they do that when they're like, hey, this is them back then. He's got a mullet and he's got an afro. <laughs> <laughs> bald guy has a full head of hair. That's always how it is. The bald person is yeah. always just... I like it, yeah. yeah. So, all right. Um, well, that's today's episode of Comics Experience. Comics Experiment. <laughs> <laughs> comics is something how long have we been doing this show I don't been know. just learned the name <laughs> this is the comics experience which is actually a pretty good show name that is a, not a terrible <laughs> I think there's a show called that yes it's ours it's this one <laughs> thanks for watching the comics no, experience sir, let us know in the comments down below what you guys think about why CW has fallen off okay or if you and, really love it, and I want to put a little caveat this is yeah. not an argument about forced diversity or strong female lead or whatever you sure. know they're going to talk about that in the comments yeah, right. now that you've said and it. I'm it's saying fine. I'm going to be ignoring those comments because yeah. not every show is made for every person no, I just ignore I want to know why CW as a whole has gone down not what your personal opinion. Oh, I guess I am asking your personal. Opinion. That is your personal. Opinion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I want your personal opinion, but only if but it's don't... right. Yeah. <laughs> only if it's mine. Only if you yeah. agree with me. I'm just gonna take the Twitter approach. You well, either agree with me or we cancel the comments. You agree with me or I block you. Okay. <laughs> I like echo chambers. Anyway, seriously though, Who let us know in the comments down below what you think this is the reason why CW has cool. been falling off. Uh, and are we crazy? I mean, Dan and I watch them weekly and you can catch our reviews over at Absolutely Marvel in DC. Exactly. Link will be down below. Exactly. But are we crazy? Are like, is it just as good as it was About the, the shows, not in general. We know we are in general. Oh, I mean, look what we do for a living. Of course we're crazy. Uh, and I said that to somebody one time. I think it was Houston. He's like, why can't you be normal? I'm like, do you know what I do for a living? Why can't be you normal. be normal? Why can't you be normal? I'm <laughs> to the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> eh, that was last that. week. I'm doing better this week. They would do that. Uh, what was today's sponsor, Dan? <laughs> Jeep ah! <laughs> Use code COMICS at checkout. Save 10 to 30%. I believe 30% at the time of watching this. If you watch it when it came out, if you're watching it at a later date, probably 10%. Either way, ha. you save money oh, with code COMICS. Also supported by our Patreons at patreon.com slash comic store. And you can get early access content, help decide what goes on the channel, and our Twitch subscribers at twitch.tv slash comic store. And where you can subscribe, help us, and you can watch us live every Thursday at roughly 3 p.m. Eastern. Watch. Well, now, to pass out. for the exit, everyone do the chair. <laughs> everyone yell and go, rock. Ready? Ah! <laughs>